Okay, I'm not gonna lie, at this point I'm kinda wondering what I got myself into, but we're gonna continue on. Hey, welcome to Tit Dot. My name's Amanda. So today's video may be a little chaotic, I don't know. Um, I did get us started with pre-chopping some shrimp and sauteing some bacon, but what I'm making today is bonseo, bonseo from, so here it is, from this cookbook that my husband got me for my birthday this last December. So from the Final Fantasy 14 cookbook. So him and my daughters are big gamers. They like to play this game together. And so he thought it'd be really fun for me to cook some of them some of the dinners. A couple videos ago, I did a honey muffin video and I talked a little bit more about this book. So if you wanna see some of the flip through and stuff, make sure you check out that video. The honey muffins were delicious. And so today I wanted to try out this. At first, when I was flipping through the book, I thought it was an omelet, but it's not. It's a savory, kind of like a shrimp pancake. We're gonna see, it's kind of, to me it looks like similar bet somewhere between a crepe and a pancake. So let's dive into this uh, recipe and see how it turns out. So the first component of this dish is to make a dipping sauce for the end. And so I'm assuming we're making it now at the beginning. So it gives the flavors a chance to kind of meld together. So I've got, it's a, between about five garlic cloves. So I'm mincing up some really large garlic too so now you all know that I your friend Amanda does not really follow recipes I use them as suggestions and I'm big component like the reason one of the biggest reasons is because sometimes finding the ingredients that are the new to you recipe you might not want to invest in them sometimes or you might not want or they might just be hard for you to find you know, there might be various reasons, but it shouldn't stop you from adapting and suiting the dish to your family's taste. Now, it may not be super authentic, but it gives you still something to make out of your comfort zone. And if you like it, then maybe next time you do work to make sure that you get the ingredients that that recipe calls for. So... One of the things that this one called for was a Thai chili. I don't have a Thai chili. They didn't have one at my store. So I'm just gonna substitute in a little bit of sriracha for heat because as you can tell, I have a jar of sriracha already. I just added the clove of garlic, or the five cloves of garlic to one third cup of water. And I am actually going to measure. So it calls for a whopping one fourth cup of fish sauce. And since fish sauce, which is ingredient, you can tell I really love, I cook with it a lot, but it's very, very strong. So I usually use a couple of drops in recipes. So since it wants one whole, one fourth of a cup, I'm definitely going to measure because like I said, it's not something that I would normally use that much of. So now I'm gonna have to go buy me a new bottle of fish sauce soon. All right, and then it calls for one fourth cup of sugar. I happen to have a one fourth cup in my sugar container. And three tablespoons of lime juice. I am just gonna eyeball that. One, two, three. And then I'm gonna go easy on this because if I have any hope of my family eating it at all, I cannot make it spicy. So we'll see. Otherwise, this is a lot of sauce for me to consume by myself. So let's whisk it together and we'll give it a quick taste. Obviously, it's gonna taste a little bit different after it's had time for that garlic and all these flavors to kind of infuse together. But I have a feeling I'm gonna actually really love this sauce and it's called Nut Jum. And hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. I did look it up on Google, but I have a feeling this would taste really good to dip popsicles in. Mm. Wow, that is a punch. That's strong. I like it. It is definitely sweet. And it's definitely got that fish sauce flavor, but not like it doesn't taste fishy. And then the lime juice. Mm. <laughs> this is good. I'm excited about this. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside and then we'll dive into. Okay, so I swear I read through this recipe like 
four times and somehow I missed that you are supposed to make the batter ahead and let it rest for an hour. I don't have time for that. So we're going to have to skip that and just hope for the best. So in an effort to dirty the least amount of dishes, cause that's one of my goals when cooking, I have this four cup measuring cup. It's full of one and a half cups of water and then it needs one and a half cups of coconut milk. So I really like this brand because it comes in a nice container and you can just put the lid back on it when you're done. So I'm gonna bring that up to the three cup mark. It says this is a very thin batter. All right, let's do the seasonings next. So it calls for half a teaspoon of cumin seeds, but I have ground cumin, so that's what I'm using. And then it calls for ground fennel, and I happen to have whole fennel, but I do have a very adorable little mortar and pestle, so I will grind this up. Oh, it releases such a great aroma when you do this. Okay, whoa, I've got fennel everywhere. Okay, I could keep going, but I basically went from that to about partially ground. And I'm not really measuring my seasonings, I'm just kind of guessing. Oh gosh, that smells so good. Fennel is very strong. A teaspoon of turmeric. Ooh, I'm getting low on this. And that's what gives, gives it that bright orangey yellow color where when I was flipping through the cookbook, I assumed it was eggs and some salt. Okay, so I'm gonna mix the seasonings in and then we are going to use one and a half cups of rice flour. So Bob Red's Mill, you can buy this one on Amazon if you can't find it locally, but uh, my store does carry a lot of the different flours that Bob Red Mill, Bob's Red Mill carries. So I was lucky to be able to buy it today. The rice flour isn't an ingredient I'm used to, that I usually have in my house. But it's a very, very soft flour. Okay. One and a half cups. So this makes a gluten-free dish. Two tablespoons of cornstarch. Fennels. I can't get over this fennel. It smells so good. Okay, so I'm going to carefully stir this up. It's right at the max of the capacity of my container here. Oh, y'all might be able to hear my little kitty cat Echo crying. I think he's wanting into my daughter Izzy's room. We're having a heck of a time. He's almost six months old by now, I think. Keeping him and Magic, who's almost five, separate for feeding time because he's still on kitten food. I'm gonna add a little bit more turmeric because I feel like it's not bright enough color. So now we're gonna let this rest while I gather up the stuff for the next part. So this is pretty involved, but you know what? Sometimes it's fun to do dishes like this. Something new and different. At least this is new for me. If you've ever made a Bon Zeo, please let me know in the comments. All right. Okay, as I was cleaning up, I was rereading just to verify, make sure, and sure enough, you're supposed to add three cups or three green scallions to the batter. So let's do that really quickly. Surely we can add one more ingredient without my batter overflowing. Now I think we're ready for the next step. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, at this point I'm kind of wondering what I got myself into, but we're gonna continue on. Cut a spread of ingredients here and if you have a nonstick skillet, I would recommend trying this in a nonstick. I do not, so I've preheated the skillet to get it nice and hot. I'm putting down a little bit of olive oil. It said canola oil, but I usually cook with olive or avocado oil. And then we're going to, it's supposed to make eight of these. So we're gonna put in about one eighth of our shrimp. Wash my hands. My goal is to make one of them with you and then we'll taste it and then I'll make up the rest of the family. Okay, so once the shrimp 
starts cooking, it'll cook really fast. I'm gonna lower this a little bit. We're gonna put in some of the bacon, some of the carrots, and it said one onion, and I don't know what kind, so I chose a red onion. Okay, well, I'm gonna lower that even some more. So I have one of these little spatulas. I figured that kind of might help push stuff around a little bit. Okay, I wanna make sure nothing's sticking and that the ingredients are kind of around the pan. And then it says to add about a half a cup of our batter. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and use a ladle. Again, make sure that there's enough oil down and nothing is stuck. And then it says to swirl it around so that we get kind of a flat pancake-y crepe sort of thing going on here. I'm gonna put some bean sprouts. And it says to cover with a lid for two minutes. So we'll be back. Okay, it's been two minutes. I'm doing this with y'all. I didn't try one of these on my own first. So <laughs> we'll see, did we get it? to be able to where it can flip over. It's kind of sticking. Oh yeah, it's sticking pretty bad. So I'm gonna turn up the heat a little bit. Definitely, mine is crumbling. It is not wanting to flip like a nice pretty pancake. Okay, so we might have a bowl of this. We might have to try another one. Okay, I said that was my plan to cook one for y'all, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay, I'm saying okay a lot. I'm adding some cilantro, and this is one of those things where I would really, really recommend using fresh ingredients, but it's the middle of winter here, and I just can't get fresh mint right now. So I'm using some dried mint, and if you can find Thai basil, again, Thai basil, this is just regular Italian basil, but fresh would definitely be best. But because I couldn't find those fresh, I did just buy some sunflower shoots just to, for some extra fresh greenery. And I figured I would try that. That wasn't in the recipe. All right, I'm going to turn this off and see what we can do about getting it off out of the skillet and onto the plate. This is, see, this is what, uh, <laughs> Oh my gosh. No, this did not turn into. I wonder if this is why we needed our batter to set up for an hour. I wonder if that would magic it or not. I might have to leave some of the batter and come back and try later. According to OutrageousBaking.com, it is important to let gluten-free batters time to rest. This allows the batter to hydrate and thicken. Gluten-free batters also need to be mixed really well. But you know what? It's cooked all the way through. I'm going to go ahead and put this on instead of a plate. I'm gonna put it in a bowl. Okay, we're gonna put this in a bowl and then we're gonna taste it because I'm just very curious how this is all gonna to come together. Watson, get down. Get down, Watson. Watson, get down. So, okay, I don't think I was filming. So, let me show you. <laughs> This did not end up looking like this. And like I said, I thought I was filming, so I've already tasted it. The batter tastes good. I like the flavor, but because it didn't crisp up, the texture is a little weird, but it tastes really good. And I keep eating on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to let that batter sit and see if that makes a difference. And we will try again, If and then I will have a different ending to the video. If not, and this is what it is. I would call it a fail. I don't have very many fails, but you know, if you don't try new things, you don't learn new things. So, it actually tastes good. <laughs> it's not gonna go to waste. I'm gonna eat this. But I am gonna try again in a minute to see if we can actually get one to come out looking more like the butt.
So I'm uh, coming back a couple hours later, I gave the uh, batter a chance to rest for about an hour and a half. I'm doing this in five times speed because it's basically the same thing as what I did before where I put the shrimp in. But the big two things that I changed is my cast iron skillet is more nonstick. And like I said, I gave the batter a lot more time to rest. So we're just retrying these pancakes. So slowing the footage down again a little bit, you can see that the edges are starting to crisp up, but I'm not convinced that the middle part is cooked all the way through. So I put the lid back on and I lowered the heat to try to give it a little bit more time to cook the middle part of this pancake through. A minute or two later, and I try to go ahead and flip it as you can see, the edges really did get nice and crispy. Speed it back up. Here I am trying to finish off this pancake and plate it up in one piece. So see how it goes. It's not looking gorgeous, but hey, it did get crispy this time. So this was my second attempt, but we got nice crispy outside. So let's go ahead and give it a try. I think giving the batter a chance to set up made a huge difference. Mm. That was good. Mm. Okay, having the crunchy batter makes a major difference because before the flavor was good, but the texture was just off. But having this um, rice batter crispy. Mm. So as you can see, mine still didn't come out in a beautiful shape, but it did get the crispy texture that we were looking for. And I think with practice, this dish would definitely be better. Or it would look prettier, but <laughs> definitely give that batter a chance to set up because apparently it does magic. So people who cook gluten-free more often, comment below and let me know what does letting the batter. Mm. Very salty with the fish sauce and the bacon, savory, and then got all these healthy vegetables. So, well, is this a dish I would do again? Probably not. There's a lot of steps, and the, to be honest, the flavor isn't so amazing that I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be craving this again. Would I order at a restaurant? Definitely. If I was gluten-free, would I cook it again? Probably. So, <laughs> I hope that helps, and I hope you'll have fun cooking with me today. Not one to give up. Last night, I only made the two pancakes, and then I put the rest of my batter in the refrigerator. And so this morning I'm trying another one of the rice pancakes with just the batter without the stuff in it, just to see if I can get better at forming them. Aha, I conquered it. So attempt three, which actually already ate all the crunchy edges and then the middle just kind of fell apart. But attempt four came out perfectly. It folded over, it looks beautiful. So. Yeah, it just takes practice, I think, and a very hot skillet. So I got my skillet very hot, poured the batter in, and swirled it quickly. And then, yay! Proud of myself. Hey, editing Amanda here. I never really filmed a ending to this video to wrap it all up because the kind of crazy format it was. But I just wanted to say thank you if you made it this far in the video. I think personally it's fun to kind of learn along with somebody and watch them make mistakes and learn from them. So, you know, from that first night when I made the pancake bowl, let's call it, <laughs> and it was a flop, and then I went and did some more research and learned that resting your batter is very important, and then having that more non-stick skillet really did help. Yeah, I was kind of frustrated at one point, but I kept going. It really is a tasty dish. I hope you will, if not make this dish, just the lesson that I would like you to take away is that, you know, 
even me with 25 years experience, there's just so much more to keep learning. And that's all I wanna share is try new things, get out outside your comfort zone, and have fun while you're doing it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button. Check out the Final Fantasy 14 kit book. It has got some really pretty photos and recipes in there. I can't wait to try even more of them. Not sponsored, <laughs> just a, it was a very sweet gift for my husband. And until the next video, bye.